Hello, and welcome to the second episode of our vocabulary series, dedicated to the technical words you need to know to ace the TOEFL test. In the first episode, we talked about important words related to astronomy. Today, we're going to talk about another very important field, zoology. Knowing the technical words and understanding the basic concepts of subjects such as biology, history, architecture, astronomy, geology, economics, and so on is crucial. Imagine you're reading about radiocarbon dating. You'll need to know what decay, carbon, organic, and isotope are. If you're listening to a lecture on domesticated animals, you should know words such as livestock, cattle, graze, and others. While, as I always say, you don't need to know every single term in every field of study, learning the basics is always helpful. And remember that even though you'll still see many unfamiliar words on test day, there are certain words you really need to understand TOEFL passages and lectures. So let's dive right into zoology. Zoology is a branch of biology that focuses on the study of animals. We'll look at 109 words from this field that you need to know for the TOEFL test. To help you memorize the zoology vocabulary better, we've created a small PDF with all the words I cover in this lesson. You can pause the video now and download it by clicking on the link down below. That way, you won't have to write down all the words, and you'll have extra help as you watch the rest of the episode. In today's list, I've included many animals that often appear on the TOEFL test. We won't focus much on them, because knowing these words isn't a must. However, they will definitely make taking the test a lot easier. For example, in the speaking section, you may be asked to summarize a lecture about bobcats. If you've no idea what a bobcat is, it may be more difficult for you to understand the lecture and answer the question. Now, if you know that a bobcat is an animal in the cat family that looks like this, you'll understand the lecture better. So for animals, we're going to have little picture quizzes. You'll see pictures of animals changing one by one, and your task will be to guess what these animals are. Let's dive right in. Let's begin with the classes of animals. When classifying animals, scientists divide them into two groups. Invertebrates, which is our first word, and vertebrates, the second word on our list. Invertebrates are animals without a backbone. They can live on land, like insects, spiders, and worms, or in water. Some examples of invertebrates are, and now it's time for your first vocabulary test. Look at the pictures and name the animals you see. I'll give you the correct word in a few seconds. Sea anemones. Sea urchins. Crayfish. Termites. Snails. All of these animals are invertebrates. By the way, don't forget to keep track of how many words you know, and then share your results at the end of the video. For example, 75 out of 109, or 100 out of 109. The next word is arthropods. An arthropod is an invertebrate animal with no internal spine. A spine is a backbone that vertebrates have a body made of segments joined together, and a hard covering, like a shell. Arthropods include insects and similar creatures. Spiders are a common example of arthropods. Other typical examples of arthropods are dragonflies, ants, beetles, Ladybugs, flies, shrimp, and grasshoppers. Back to vertebrates. These are animals with a backbone. They include mammals. Mammals are warm blooded animals that have fur or hair, give birth to live offspring with a few exceptions, and produce milk to feed their young. Time for a quick vocabulary quiz. A 
hamster, a whale, a bat, a giraffe, and even a human are all mammals. Polar bears, Orcas, sloths are those slow-moving mammals known for their relaxed, laid-back lifestyle. Meerkats. Now all mammals are vertebrates, but not all vertebrates are mammals. Birds are also vertebrates. How would you call this bird? It's an eagle. And this one? It's a hawk, owl, falcon, ostrich, raven. Vertebrates also include reptiles, which are cold-blooded animals with scaly skin. Some examples are Snakes, lizards, reptiles that have scales for skin, a long body, a pointed tail, and usually four legs. Turtles, tortoises, crocodiles, and alligators. Here is an interesting question for you. What's the difference between a turtle and a tortoise? Turtles live mostly in water, such as ponds, rivers, and oceans, but some species can also live on land. Tortoises, on the other hand, are primarily land dwellers, often found in dry or grassy areas. Turtles spend most of their time in water and come ashore mainly to lay eggs. Now, tortoises spend their entire lives on land, in burrows or under rocks to stay cool. One important note, as I always say, knowing a lot of words is a great help on your TOEFL test. But it's not enough to get a 100 or higher. If you really want to score high, you should know the question strategies and most importantly, use them effectively. Recently, I've been busy with consultations after our TOEFL prep course and my one-on-one -on -one sessions and since I'm always analyzing the mistakes my students make, I've once again come to the conclusion that most students only need to change a few minor things to get the score they really need. Instead, they spend time, money, and effort retaking the test over and over again, trying to get their target score. For example, most students usually come to our sessions with a score of 22 to 23 on the speaking test not because they have a poor level of English, but because they are so worried about following all the rules that when they start to speak, they stutter, hesitate, and produce the worst possible answers. The same goes for reading. Most of the students I see in my sessions are well aware of the strategies for each question. Yet, they don't use those strategies well enough to find the right answers quickly. So we have to go through each question type together, and then they start getting high scores. So, if you are struggling with any section of the test, you can take our TOEFL course, where we'll teach you all the skills you need to finally ace the TOEFL test. The link is below. As always, if you choose the pro package with a post-course consultation, be sure to schedule it at least a week before the test. That way, you'll have time to implement all the corrections I've made. Amphibians are another class of vertebrates. These are animals that can live in water and on land. A typical amphibian is a cold-blooded vertebrate that is born in water and breathes with gills. This is another word from our list. Gills look like this. As amphibians grow, their lungs develop so that they can also live on land. Some examples of amphibians are frogs and toads. Frogs are smooth and slimy with long legs, while toads are bumpy, dry-skinned with shorter legs. Finally, fish are aquatic vertebrates with gills and fins. 
We've already discussed what gills are. Now this is how fins look. Time for another small animal vocabulary test. Clownfish. It's a swordfish. This is a herring. A seahorse. A trout. The first block of our lecture covered. Congratulations! Now, you may ask yourself, do I really need all these words? Will they be used on the TOEFL? The answer is, of course. Just recently, I was going through a reading passage that mentioned the invertebrate fauna. So, let's keep going. A few other words to know are specimen. A specimen is a sample of something, such as a specimen of blood or body tissue taken for medical testing. In zoology, this word means a sample or example of an animal often used in scientific studies. For example, a specimen of an African lion might be used to study its anatomy, behavior, or genetics. Again, a few days ago, I was analyzing a TOEFL lecture with one of my students, and there was a part about a rare insect specimen. Let's continue. Animals can be warm-blooded or cold-blooded. Warm-blooded animals are those that can maintain a nearly constant body temperature, regardless of the environment in which they live. They can also be called endotherms. Remember that endotherms are warm-blooded animals. For example, mammals and birds are endotherms. Now, cold-blooded animals are those that rely on the outside environment to regulate their body temperature. They're also called ectotherms. Ectotherms are cold-blooded animals. Some examples of ectotherms are reptiles, amphibians, and fish, which are the words we already know. Great job! The TOEFL Integrated Writing Task likes to explore the topic of endotherms and ectotherms, and you'll often find these words in reading passages and lectures. So I suggest you write them down if you haven't heard them before. Animals can also be diurnal and nocturnal. Diurnal animals are those that are active during the day. For example, lions, squirrels, cheetahs. Nocturnal animals, as you may have guessed, are active during the night. Some common examples of nocturnal animals are owls, hedgehogs, raccoons, and bats. So, diurnal is active during the day, and nocturnal is active during the night. When studying animals, scientists also examine their dietary habits. Animals can be herbivores. These are animals that eat mostly plants. Some examples of herbivores are a kangaroo, a hippopotamus, a rhinoceros, or a rhino. Carnivores. These are animals that eat other animals. Examples. Anteaters. Sharks. Tigers, wolves. Omnivores are animals that eat both plants and animals. Some examples of omnivores are wild boars, bears, skunks, and of course humans. On the TOEFL, you'll often see mentions of carnivores, omnivores, and herbivores in lectures and reading passages. You may also see adjectives carnivorous, omnivorous, and herbivorous. For example, carnivorous plants, herbivorous animals. If you've taken TOEFL speaking tests, you definitely see in question 4 about carnivorous plants. Now, you know that carnivorous plants are plants that catch and eat animals, usually insects, to get nutrients. When we looked at the examples of omnivores, we saw the word wild boars. Boars are wild animals. Animals can be wild or domesticated. Domesticated animals are animals that have been bred and trained by humans over generations to live with and be useful to people. Let's test how well you know domesticated animals. Some typical domesticated animals are a hen, an ox, A yak, a calf, 
A donkey. A cow. Now, a few wild animals are. Leopards. Note the pronunciation. Leopard. Stags, which are male deer. And beavers. Speaking of beavers, they are rodents. This is another word you'll see a lot on the TOEFL. Rodents are mammals that have a single pair of sharp incisors, which are narrow-edged teeth at the front of their mouth, in both the upper and lower jaws. Mice, rats, squirrels, beavers, and hamsters are all rodents. So, when you hear the word rodent, remember that it's a small animal with sharp teeth. Rodents are primarily prey rather than predators. They are often hunted by various predators, including birds of prey, such as hawks and owls, carnivorous mammals, such as foxes, and even larger reptiles, like snakes. As you can see, you already know so many words. Hawks, owls, reptiles. What about prey and predators? Animals that are hunted and eaten by other animals are called prey. For example, hares are a typical example of prey. Predators are animals that hunt and eat other animals, such as wolves. Finally, let's talk about habitats. Habitats are places where animals live. Your habitat is the environment you're used to living in. Habitats can be aquatic or terrestrial. Aquatic animals live in water. Now, terrestrial animals live on land. Aquatic habitats include freshwater environments, such as lakes, rivers, or ponds, and saltwater environments, such as oceans. Freshwater animals include fish, such as trout, amphibians, such as frogs, and insects, such as water striders. Saltwater animals include sea anemones and jellyfish. Other aquatic animals include oysters, sea otters, rays, seahorses, seals, clams, squid, and sea lions. On the TOEFL, you may also find a collocation marine animals. These animals live in the ocean or sea, not in freshwater. They're a subset of aquatic animals, but are found only in saltwater environments. Marine animals include a wide range of species, such as sharks, clownfish, whales, dolphins, seals, and starfish. Simply put, while all marine animals are aquatic, not all aquatic animals are marine. Aquatic animals can live in either fresh or salt water, while marine animals are adapted to ocean environments. Speaking of terrestrial or land animals, we've already covered many of them. Two more examples that I think are interesting to mention are a moose and a gazelle. As you can see, habitats are different environments where animals live. Some typical habitats are freshwater habitats, deserts, grasslands, wetlands, estuaries, rainforests, oceans, savannas, and coastal habitats. Ready for one last animal vocabulary check? What's this animal called? A humpback whale. All of you have probably done the integrated essay about humpback whales. If you haven't, try it. You can find it on the KMF platform, TPO 49. The next one is... Vultures. Amoeba. There is a cool YouTube channel called the Amoeba Sisters that I highly recommend to improve your biology vocabulary. They explain difficult concepts in a fun and easy to understand way. I'll also be filming a new video on biology terms for the TOEFL test soon, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to make sure you don't miss it. A baleen whale. The last animal for today is a bobcat. 
Congratulations! As you can see, we're closing this episode with the same word we started with. If you want to have all the words in one place, use the link below to download our free PDF file. These are 109 zoology words that will definitely help you succeed on your TOEFL test. Now it's time to practice. I highly recommend that you take a few practice TOEFL tests, and I'm 100% sure you'll see many of these words on the reading, listening, writing, and speaking sections of the exam. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more TOEFL tips and tricks. And remember, scoring 100 plus on the TOEFL isn't rocket science, it's the little things you do that make all the difference. As always, I wish you all a stellar TOEFL score. See you next time. Bye-bye.